round. Okay. Do you want to go first then? No, you go. Okay. So Wakefield Trinity have re-signed winger Liam Kay from Toronto Wolfpack. Kay has joined Trinity on loan for the rest of the 2020 campaign and has agreed a contract with them for the 2021 and 2022 seasons. The 28-year-old began his Super League career with Wakefield but has helped Toronto from the third tier to the top tier flight during his three and a half years with the Canadian club. Uh, former fans, France prop Anthony Maria is to leave the Catalan Dragons at the end of the 2020 Super League season. The 33-year-old is in his second spell with the Perpignan-based club, making 66 Super League appearances in all. Swinton have handed a new two-year contract to halfback Jack Hansen. Hansen arrived at the Lions in 2017 and has made a positive impression at Haywood Road during the three seasons that have followed. Swinton have also signed former Wigan and Lee back rower Nick Gregson for the 2021 season. The 24-year-old has recently been playing rugby union for Preston Grasshoppers, but he will return to league with Swinton in 2021. He played it on there on Jewel Reg previously. Uh, Toulouse Olympique have confirmed that winger Paul Marcon has agreed a new two-year contract extension with the club with the option of a third. The 25-year-old French international made his debut for Toulouse in 2017. Uh, an example of an area that must be a growth participation area. Wigan Warriors women confirmed the signing of former Bath Rugby Union Player of the Year, Anna Marie Davies. Davies is a current member of the Team GB Teachers, Wheel- Teachers Women's Squad and scored a hat-trick in her second ever game of Rugby League. Good signing. Uh, England Wheel- Wheelchair Rugby League has announced that Tom Coyd will head their new coaching structure as preparations ramp up for the World Cup in 2021. The 24-year-old, who is part of the coaching setup at Argonauts Wheelchair Team, has been involved in the England setup for a number of seasons and will be assisted by Wayne Boardman of Halifax, who is an experienced member of the playing squad and also Martin Rothwell of Sheffield Hallam University. They will be given specific coaching support by two members of the England Performance Unit, Stuart Barrow, who is a highly regarded coach developer, and Professor Ben Jones, the EPU's Head of Performance. Uh, the organisers of the Euro 13s competition set to get underway in 2021 have announced their two members of their legal team as well as head of governance on social media. Why did I get this one? <laughs> Pal- Palagiotis Rumelia Rumeliotis, I should have practiced that one, and Daniel bidder Potts will make up the legal representation for the tournament with both assisting Head of Governance Tiziano Franchini as part of the competition's off-field team. Organisers have always, all, also announced a three-man refereeing panel for the competition, including the UK's Paul Stockman and Phil Johnson, as well as Tony Palacios of Spain. Um, and then in today's sort of update on the Euro 13s, the, the RLEF has issued a statement uh, what a day to get your statement out and no one care about it, guys. Uh, confirming that it will not formally endorse the proposed new Euro 13s competition. The knockout competition recently finalised the lineup of 16 teams for an inaugural campaign in 2021, but in a statement issued by the Federation, it says the board has not received the additional financial information asked for from the organisers and, as a result, will not be formally endorsing it. It did sort of kind of praise the fact that the looking to increase participation and that sort of stuff and saying you know shares the same aims with that but obviously from the RALF standpoint still some questions to be answered about the Euro 13s but they're starting to answer some of them I guess yes so also Swinton duo Rodri Lloyd and Will Herb have signed new deals with the club Lions captain Lloyd has signed a two year deal with Swinton the centre or back rower has earned 18 caps for Wales and back rower Hope has signed a one-year deal with the Lions for the 2021 campaign and he's earned nine caps for Ireland. Uh, finally, Brett Ferris has signed a one-year contract extension with not Super League bound Featherstone, <laughs> keeping him at the club at least until the end of 2021. The 34-year-old back rower joined the uh, Rovers ahead of the 2020 season and made six appearances for the club before the championship season was shut down due to the coronavirus pandemic um so yeah that's the news this week done on the fly a bit i think we should be proud of ourselves there sarah for how we've put that all together um the most newsy show ever we're now going to move on to and forgive us if we skip through these a bit the nrl match reviews (laughs) 
in match reviews, it was round 10 of the NRL. And we started on Thursday, as usual, where it finished the Roosters 20, the Raiders 24. Um, George Williams scored a try and uh, White, Elliot Whitehead and Ryan Sutton also played. Uh, Rich Wilkinson got in touch and said, great game of rugby league. Neither team deserved to lose, but the Raiders were good for the win. Williams looked good in the big moments. Good on him. And Brendan Loftus said, made the mistake of tipping the Roosters for this one. Why would I tip Canberra with their huge injury list? Really stood up and matched the Roosters in all areas. The English blokes were all standouts. Williams' try was fantastic. Friend, Tupanua and Tedesco are all great defenders. Heard an Aussie podcast last week with the quote, Elliot Whitehead is an 8.5 out of 10 player every game, which he certainly was in this game. I think that's fair comment on Elliot Whitehead. Uh, he's not tipping the stats sheet every week, but he's having a is having a big leadership role, I think, on that team. He he's their defensive leader at, for me. Mm, yeah, he's sort of a bit of a yeah. He's an under the radar player, isn't he? But it's nice to see him getting the recognition. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, as a second rower, it could be kind of it could be overlooked, like you say. But it, he's certainly making sure he's not this year, especially. And George Williams, arguably the leader of their attack now. He was probably the better of the two of him and Jack White in this game, and both of them showed a bit more control of the game but Williams with Hodgson out took, took control of the game I thought and had a big role in it um, and and yeah great resilience from the Raiders to come back against the Roosters when they have had when they have got so many injury problems they've still got a pretty formidable side and, and this was a much better performance than we've been seeing recently I think um, Joseph Tapané had his best game of the season so far for the Raiders as well finding his offloading game was a huge part of of them getting the Roosters on the back foot. So well done to the Raiders. Yeah, it finished Storm 42, Titan 6. This was the game that I saw some of. And again, there's not really a lot to say other than the Storm ran through the Titans. I mean, Holbrook's got a huge job on there. What do you think his biggest starting point job is? What what does he need to fix most? Defence. Tackling. Yeah. But... um. But there's just so much to work on. I think he has to address the squad as well. They're just not... I mean, every week, players I've never heard of. Um, what about... Uh, it... I mean, it didn't get much better for Queensland, did it, in the next game? It finished... Um, West Tigers 48, Broncos 0. Uh, Rich Wilkinson said, Tigers were amazing tonight. Billy Walters take a bow. Grant is world-class already, and that is scary. However, the Bronx are fucking shit. Wow. And soap opera for men said Boyd equals shit. Egg Council Creeper said either send the Broncos to Perth or do to them what we did south in the noughties. Embarrassment to the league they are. <laughs> I'm sure there's a tongue in the cheek there, but they're having a bit of a rough time of it, aren't they? Tom Andrews said lax defence, countless errors, lack of direction. It's too close to home, this. P.S. Has anyone ever brought up the fact that Benji looks like Danny Maguire's Aussie brother? I don't think I don't think anybody has ever met, brought that up, Tom. I mean, I wanted to be quick through this segment, but I'm going to have to get a picture of Benji Marshall up now to see what he's on about. <laughs> uh, no. No one's brought it up because it's not true. Alan Walker said, Well, the night he was born, Lord, I swear, the moon turned... Oh, it's another song. Right. Well, the night he was born, Lord, I swear, the moon turned fire red. The night he was born, Lord, I swear, the moon turned fire red. His poor mother cried out, and the old gypsy was right. She said, Benji Marshall shagged the Broncos inside out at Leichhardt in the rain. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't watch this game, but I've, I, I was going to watch it, and then I thought, what's the point? Herbie didn't play, and the West Tigers absolutely romped it, so well done to them. <laughs> Uh, it finished Dragons 28, Bulldogs 22, Luke Thompson uh, with 127 metres. Yeah, and I mean, um, Dean Pay left the Bronco- the Bulldogs, didn't he, last week? Um, and the, the new coach came in, the, the Greek coach. And basically, he's going to be watching this game thinking, how did they find a fucking new way to lose a game? Because uh, the Bulldogs were pretty much on top for 
most of the middle of it from the first 10 minutes after that stage they were the better side and Luke Thompson was a big part of that playing big minutes again but um, a few mess ups in the end at the end from the Bulldogs the Dragons took full advantage and, and the, the, the game ceiling try I don't know if you've seen this Sarah um, a long cut out pass that went through the centre's hands, hit his knees, bounced forward, basically into the hands of one of the Dragons players, who then had a free run. All the way through I the did timeline. see that, yes. Yeah, just a new way to lose a game for the Bulldogs. Uh, it's, it's not. I think it was better from them this week. There was, you know, they were in the game, but that was mostly through the Dragons making tons and tons of errors. But then when the the errors turned, was at the wrong time right near the last right in the last five minutes <laughs> yes uh, blah, 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 blah. it finished Rabbiters 18 Knights 20 with Burgess playing and running 179 metres uh, Lee Whitnell got in touch and said for almost 70 minutes Newcastle were well on top and the bunnies looked hopeless but then they threw caution to the wind finally unleashing 2018 vintage Damien Cook and in the end they were a Tom Burgess drop ball away from winning. Burgess's hard running had been a factor in the late surge too but Dick Fingers are fitted as standard unfortunately. The Knights win felt like a loss in the end but they march on. Alan Walker said South's put on the away kit for no reason and played like the away team. White rabbits were not 10 feet tall. Would have looked much worse if Ponga could have kicked the extras. You can strike the bunnies for for the grand final now. The Knights too? Yeah, this was a game that was um, dominated by the Knights and they missed three, three kicks at goal that would have made the game dead at the, the 60 sort of minute mark. I don't know if you saw any of this, Sarah, but the Rabbit Rabbitohs staged a really exciting comeback and very nearly got, got back into this. Tom Burgess had one try ruled out um, correctly, but unfortunately it, it, it sort of got very close to the line and in reaching out to score the ball kind of juggled it a little bit and it kind of brushed the opposition player before he regathered to put it down and, and the the, t- the put down was a little bit you know 50-50 I think if the only issue was the put down issue it probably would have been a try but the, 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 the earlier little spillage unfortunate and then he had a ball stripped from him from the kickoff of the try that was scored shortly after that anyway and he had the ball stripped from him um, but no camera angle could conclusively prove it was a strip and the referee gave it as a knock-on, but it was definitely a strip. I feel sorry for Tom Burgess, uh, who was fantastic in the second half of this game. Um, a big part of why the Rabbitohs nearly came back, but the Knights show that they can beat other good sides. Yep. And then it was Seagulls 22, Eels 18. And David Hunter said, this is what happens when you rest, in quote marks, players and underestimate your opposition. Manly were tough, but a switched on Eels team puts a big puts on a big score. Inexperienced halves not identifying a player that can't tackle was the final determining factor. And Alan Walker said, high flying Eels breeze into Brookie to face a bashed up and beaten Manly. Put your mortgage on him. The more you play, you mo- the more you play, the more you win. Then, t- n- then to pow, a fired up Seagulls blast the Eels out of the water and pissed all over them. DC even went in like he had spiders all over him. They tried to come back, but too little, too late. Is it a blip or have the wheels come off the Eels? Great result for Turboless Manly. Yeah, I mean. Manly seem to remember within them somewhere some sort of fight for this grudge game. It's somehow they they hate each other, I think, because they came into the competition at the same time. I don't know. Um, and the Eels were just off the pace, down down on some of their main players, and a couple of others didn't turn up enough in the game, I think. Um, I don't know what you made of it from, from your Eels fan perspective. Well, um, I didn't watch a lot of it because, very excitingly, Helen was coming over. Um, I saw it at 16 0 um, when uh, the referee initially had given a knock on and a line drop out to Manly and then changed it to probably the right decision and being a knock on against the Eels over the line. Um, so it was a 20 meter start, restart. Um, but yeah, certainly the early part of the match that I saw, the Eels just looked off the, um, off the pace, off the game. Um, and yeah, presumably, as David said, it's what happens when you underestimate your opposition. It did seem like they sort of went into this one kind of thinking they didn't have to 
not that they didn't have to try, maybe that they didn't have to try. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. There was an, an element of underestimation, certainly an element of um, underpreparedness for what came at them in the early stages. Yeah. 